You know, we already know what's bad for the lake and, and what helps to make it uh, clearer and cleaner. Silt and nitrogen and phosphorus runoff need to be slowed down as much as possible. Tules and wetlands act as filters and purifiers and counter the algae. Runoff from exposed and disturbed soils can be slowed down by changing some agricultural practices with stricter, stricter enforcement of the county's grading, grading ordinance and some maybe some new ordinances uh, that would help agriculture to, to get in line. Uh, septic tanks close to the lakeshore need to be slowly eliminated and replaced with systems that protect the lake from harmful contaminants. Elimination of septic tanks is a long-term project and, and it shouldn't be done at the expense of property owners. Tulies need to be planted everywhere and existing wetlands need to be protected. I have a five-point plan to help heal the lake. It's not a panacea and it's not a magic bullet, but it will make a difference for sure. If we concentrate on those things, on agriculture, on grading, on planting tulies, on restoring wetlands, and eliminating septic tanks close to the lake, we're going to see a big difference in just a short time. And those aren't expensive measures to take, but these are things that we know will help as opposed to some very expensive testing, satellite photos, all of those things which definitely have some merit and definitely will give us information. But people have been looking at this lake and testing it and then analyzing it for many, many years. Big studies have been done and they all come back with the same conclusion that we should keep the silt out of the lake. We haven't done that. Uh, we, we do these expensive tests and then when the tests are over we continue with business as usual. I don't think we, the lake can, can handle business as usual for too much longer and that's why I want to institute these measures that will make a difference pretty quickly. You know, this topic's dollars for uh, tulies, and uh, despite some people's belief, just restoring tulies in the wetlands won't necessarily solve Clear Lake cyanobacteria problem. And that's probably the bad news. Tulies are great from the standpoint that we have to restore the lost ecological buffers and process complexities by restoring these attributes. We will, of course, help the lake, and that has to do with the ecology of the lake. After all, though, when you look at it, Impounded lakes don't have our problems, but they also have no tulies and wetlands. So what's the difference? Well, the nutrients are already in our lake that are causing the problem. They're just being recycled every year. We're adding to those nutrients, but the ones we have are too much and they're being recycled. The recycling happens because we are a shallow, natural, warm water lake. And, they're, and the warm water lake is naturally very sensitive to upland inputs and these upland inputs stay for years before they're locked up. 60 years of bad land management and upland land management has created the situation that we're in now. So the problem to solve is actually one of knowing the rate. If we know the rate then we can look at those uplands and say we have to reduce the upland inputs by this much in order for that lockup rate to actually make a difference. Now, what is lockup rate? And what are the nutrients? The two nutrients that ordinarily will cause the problems for a lake are nitrogen and phosphorus. During the summer, we have the cyanobacteria blooms. We have very low nitrogen. The issue comes from very high phosphorus. You have a ratio of low nitrogen to high phosphorus, then you basically uh, favor one cyanobacteria over another. They bloom because they have this advantage and they take over the entire lake. And so the rate of phosphorus lockup is what you have to look at. Now what locks up phosphorus is it naturally will lock up in the sediment, be buried, over a period of time. We don't know what that rate is and what the natural rate is. And so the bottom line is without knowing the rate you won't know how much of the input to, to lower in order to say our internal uh, problem is actually being solved by this lockup rate. So, if we fixed all the inputs of uh, external nitrogen to phosphorus tomorrow, we would still have the cyanobacteria problem until the internal uh, levels of phosphorus are locked up out of reach. 
or perhaps another limiting micronutrient will save the day. <coughs> How's that? Overton and I am going to be talking today about uh, Measure L. Uh, that is the measure that's on the ballot for the lake. Uh, I believe that uh, the lake is one of our biggest assets here in Lake County and we need to do the best to try to bring back as much tourism as we can and be able to have our events back down here on the lower end of the lake. Uh, here in District 2, uh, one of the problems is our algae. Uh, and hopefully we can um, get some funding to be able to uh, make more motion in our lake because that's what will keep the algae from uh, coming up upon our shores. Uh, the booms don't seem to be enough and they're not getting put out early enough in order to stop them from coming up to the shorelines. So our, my hope is that with this major rail we can help do some funding uh, towards the center of the lake to create what I basically consider uh, a wave motion down here. Uh, there is not enough uh, undercurrent in our lakes to keep the water moving. Uh, it hits our shorelines and uh, ends up uh, just sitting here, not, not creating the motion. I believe that we do need to do some dredging around the edge of the lake to create the depth for the wave because with depth there is uh, more of a wave motion. Uh, so I'm hoping that with this measure that we will be able to uh, take some of that money and do some of our inlet depth uh, to create that wave motion to keep the water moving so that algae doesn't build up around our edge of the lake. Uh, so I'm going to uh, believe that uh, there are, you know, our lake is very natural. It's a natural lake. It turns every year when the heat, when the ground heats up, the water heats up, should I say, it hits the bottom. Uh, which is what creates the algae growing. So, you know, with the water continuing to move, it keeps it a lot cooler, will keep the algae down. So that's uh, why I am definitely for the major L uh, um, to be uh, put on the ballot. Uh, 